So for instance, let's have a think about this y equals x squared business, right? To get an inverse out of it, instead of just saying y equals x squared, I'm going to restrict to this patch over here, right? I'm going to make its domain x is, well, how would I say this is an inequality? What part of the graph have I got? What values of x? Um, greater than zero. Greater than, do you reckon I can include zero? Yeah. I think including zero is okay, right? Um, because remember, what I don't want to have is any double ups, right? But at x equals zero, you don't have a double up, it's just right there at one spot, right? So if I take this, then the inverse will become y equals, well you only get the top part, you see that? You don't, you have to disregard the negative bit, right? So you get this guy. Now, the domain x is greater than or equal to zero. Remember when we went from a function to its inverse? We swapped everything, right? We swapped every x becomes a y, every y becomes an x. Well, when you swap this, you get a y is greater than or equal to zero. That's not domain anymore at all. What is that? That's, that's range, right? So this is actually really important. The domain of your original becomes the range of your inverse. And the, if we cared about it, the range of your original becomes the domain of your inverse. That's actually worth writing down. When we swap x's and y's, we swap range and domain as well. Okay, now, just a really small um, sub-note, right? You notice over here, I was like, I just chose a part. We just chose this part over here, right? Would anyone like to suggest to me, why didn't we, you don't have to draw this by the way, why didn't we pick the other part? Like this part over here, there's another restriction. What's the domain of this graph over here? X is less than or equal to zero, right? Now you can take that and just like before, you can put on y equals x and you can reflect it across. You will get this shape over here. Oh, that's sort of too far, sorry, there we go. So you're still going to get, like is that, is that an inverse function, the blue graph? Thumbs up, right? So why don't we do that? Why do you think we will do this rather than this? Any takers? When did you first start using square roots? What topic was it in? Do you remember? Indices. Hmm, Pythagoras. way before our indices. It was actually Pythagoras, right? Because you'd say, oh, if you know what this side is and you know what this side is, then you'd say this is the square root of uh, this plus this. So you're like, oh, I need, I need to know what square roots are, right? But in the context of measuring triangles, the only thing that makes sense is a positive value. You want to get things above the axis. Those are positive values. You're like, well, these are, I mean, I could take them, but what's the point, okay? Now, the real issue is, uh, if I put the rest of the graph back on, the real issue is that guy there. See how it turns around? That's the issue, right? The two graphs that we started with, uh, 3x minus 1, I think, and what was it? x cubed plus 2. The reason I gave you these two is because neither of them turns. Did you notice that? You can go back to where you drew these on your page. You're like, there's no turning point. And so these are both, think back to when we were classifying functions. Do you remember when we did that one many business, all that kind of thing, right? What kinds of functions are these? Think about them. These are both one-to-one. -one. That's why I deliberately gave them to you. I just didn't tell you, right? But this guy over here, the original y equals x squared, is not one-to-one, -one, is it? Which one is it? It's many-to-one. Many, -one. many different x values will give you the same y value, right? So the problem with having a many-to-one is that when you swap everything around, you're swapping the many and the one, you get a one-to-many, this guy which is not a function anymore, right? So that's why we have to learn to restrict the domain. Now, if for example, I'm not even gonna worry about the numbers, I'm just gonna draw a picture for you, right? If for example, I gave you a graph like this, when I take this and do the inverse of it, right, what will be the problem? Well, you know how we look for the vertical line test over here, right? When you're thinking about inverses, everything swaps. Vertical isn't vertical anymore, it's now gonna be horizontal, right? If you swap X and Y, this vertical line becomes horizontal. So if I put a horizontal line against this, right? Have a look, is there a place where it fails? Yes. 
And the answer is yes, like anywhere up in here, you're in trouble, right? So if I swap this thing around, you will not get a function because this part here, once I reflect it over, will fail the vertical line test. Does that make sense? So I need to, um, I need to restrict the domain. So if, for example, let's call this, let's just give it a value. Let's call that negative one right there. And let's call this, I don't know, that looks like three quarters or something like that, okay? I could take sections of this. Can someone give me an example of a restricted domain, which if I took the other side, if I took the inverse, it would give me a function. Someone give me an example? What are you thinking, Rasen? Zero to untipped. Zero to where? Zero minus two. Uh, zero, Here's two. zero to where? Minus two. Minus two? No. To the left or the right? Uh, oh, is that Think, right? Come back over here. Oh. Look at this original guy, right? I said, okay, to the right is okay. To the left is okay. It's this point where it turns that it's the problem, right? So for example, let's just hide, this will do. Oh, I need something big. One to one, right? See that section there? If you did the reflection, that part would be okay. Right? It would, it, it fails, sorry, it passes the horizontal line test, so when you flip it over, it'll pass the vertical line test, right? So this part's okay, how would you state that inequality, that domain? Minus one, two, one. Yeah, x is less than negative one, or equal to is fine, right? Um, but that's not the only section that works, right? I need, I need another thing to hold up, sorry, there we go. So if I take this section here, see that spot there? You see this little section here is one to one, right? So if you did that reflection, it's gonna be fine, right? There's one last section. Can you see it? Can you tell me what it is? Now that I've like ruined what I've written on the board by here. Yeah, uh, over here, right? This part here looks just like the part that we restricted for the x squared graph, right? So you can actually pick any of these bits and you'll get an inverse function out of it. Does that make sense? So I'm gonna write those answers for you just so you know, right? Uh, x is less than negative one that would give me an inverse function. Between negative one and three over four, that would give me an inverse function. Or to the right of three over four, that would also give me an inverse function. Isn't the notation, would you write two or three? Say it again. Would you write, say, the x is greater or equal to three? This one over here? You know how you write like the domain? You mean like an interval notation? You could, I mean exactly the same as this would be to write that x belongs to uh, three quarters all the way to infinity. Okay. You could write it like that if you want, but they're exactly the same thing. Okay. All right, so in questions 7, 8, 9, and 10, they're going to ask you about this, right? They're going to ask about, well, tell me about this mutual inverse thing. Can you show that this really is the inverse by putting one into the other? It's a way of testing. If someone gives you two functions, you can find out whether it's the inverse or not by putting one inside the other or vice versa.